What's up YouTube, it's LDS Reliance. Uh, let's go ahead and finish up this wind turbine project today. It's kind of rainy outside and got some spare time, so let's knock this thing out. So where we left off last time, we were uh, we had planned out and designed the, the yaw system. So I need to get that buttoned up first. So what we'll do, and I realize these are way overkill, way too long. Uh, for this purpose, but uh, this is all I had uh, at home. I'll probably get some more later that, that are shorter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drill and uh, first I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller bit, but uh, I'm going to put two. <clears throat> see if we can get this on camera better. <clears throat> two holes here for these bolts to go through that's going to hold uh, this in place. And that way it will face, the, the wind turbine will face in the direction of the wind. Um, and then I'm going to put these, uh, use a bigger bit, lastly, to, to pun finish punching out the holes. Put these, these bolts through it with these nuts. And then we'll move on to the, the motor part. Okay, now that we've got the, the tail figured out, we're going to... Um, wrap some some tape around the motor so that it will fit in the end here <clears throat> and then we're going to drill a couple maybe three small holes around this area and put some small set screws in there just to kind of give it some further ability to hold itself in position Okay, so what I've done is I've wrapped electrical tape around the outside about, I would say, 15 times or so, and that's going to make it really nice and snug inside the hole. In fact, you've got to really kind of smash it in there and kind of twist as you go to get it in there, and that's going to provide a nice um, tight fit. And then I'm going to, like I said, drill some holes in the sides, put in some small machine screws just to kind of give it another little point of contact there. But before I do that, I need to connect some wires to this so that when I put it in, I don't have to take it back out. So we're going to use some, some terminal connectors here on these two, uh, hook up a, a red lead and a black lead and, and then connect it through the bottom here before we go any further. Okay, so we've got, right here I've got some 14 gauge um, negative wire, some 14 gauge positive wire. I've got a couple uh, small little, I think they're spade connectors or whatever these are called, but these are perfect to fit over these little terminals. And they're really snug on there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach, um, I think I'm going to need about 10 or 12 feet worth of, of wire. So we'll go ahead and get this wired up and get the motor put into its home permanently. Okay, so we've got this wired through the, the piping. Um, <clears throat> now we just need to connect these terminals to the appropriate sides of the motor here. And then, sorry, I, sorry for all the sniffing, it's allergy season here. Um, and then we just need to kind of twist this into place snugly. about the set screws a little bit later. This is really in there. It's not going anywhere, so. Okay, just like that. This is pretty, pretty well flush with the end. So there we have the top part 
with the, uh, the kind of flap on the end for the yaw control and the motor. And then we're going to pull the, the wire. I've got a bunch of extra wire. I'm going to pull it tight through the, through the pole over here. And then get this top part attached. Okay, here it is standing up. I just kind of have all the leftover wire there. And then there's the top. So I'm gonna reattach the blades and take it outside. I actually figured out what I'm gonna do here. I've got some landscaping, sorry. I've got some landscaping uh, ties that I'm going to be drilling that bottom part into so that it'll be free. It'll be heavy enough that it's not gonna tip over, but it'll be free enough that nothing's gonna interfere with the, uh, the pivoting. So let's go ahead and get this finished assembled and take it outside. And the good news is it's very windy today, so we'll uh, hopefully be able to give it a go. Okay guys, we have this thing outside, and as you can see, the base is a little bit in unstable. I'll show you that a little bit later, but it definitely does pick up the wind. Um, the cut-in speed is a little bit higher than what I would have liked, so it's not picking up these lighter gusts. And uh, on the bottom, the uh, the pivot point, the, the Lazy Susan bearing, is uh, it's getting ba bound slightly because the pole leans a little bit. So I'm going to have to rig something up to kind of keep it more vertical and relieve some of the pressure off of that bearing. But, you know, this is a science experiment. It's just to prove the concept. So it's going to work okay for now. So I have my, uh, my multimeter uh, rigged up over here. So when we get one of these good little gusts that starts spinning this thing, we'll see. Uh, I'll show you what kind of voltage we're getting. But anyways, um, that's what it looks like. That's uh, the way it works. And uh, there's a side profile. Again, I had to open my big fat mouth because I said it was windy today and then as soon as I come out here, it's, it's no longer quite as windy. It's just kind of gusting here and there. So I'll have to do a follow-up video uh, on, a, on a better day when, once I get some of these problems fixed. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what kind of voltage we're getting. Now keep in mind these are not strong gusts, these are probably 10 to 15 mile per hour gusts and they're not lasting for more than a few seconds. So obviously there's some kinks that we need to work out here to make this really viable for producing meaningful power, but uh, it's more of just a demonstration and uh, it is working, it needs some refinement, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next installment. I'll try to make some improvements and then do another video. Thanks for watching.